So in this module, we'll talk about using SVD for learning word representations. Okay. Uh, so what does singular value decomposition do? Yeah, these are all possible variants. So people have tried various things, and one of the PPMI one is the most reliable thing. That's what is prevalent. But you can think of, I mean, you said one. There are ten different things which we can do for the co-occurrence matrix, right? But this is the most popular and most uh, stable thing to do. Uh, yeah, what does a singular value decomposition do? Can you read it from the slide, please? It gives a rank k approximation of the matrix. Okay, so let me start defining a few things. So from now on, when I refer to the co-occurrence matrix, I would mean the X PPMI matrix, right? Which was the positive PMI, which was replacing all negative PMIs by zero. Okay, and just to not have this nasty variable, I'll just call it as X. So from now on, whenever I say X, I mean the positive PMI co-occurrence matrix. Okay, so that's what this matrix is. Okay, and we know that SVD gives us this reconstruction of the original matrix. And fine, uh, it gives us the best rank k approximation of the original matrix, and it discovers the latent semantics in the corpus. Everyone remembers this, like that's what we were do, why we were using PCA and SVD and autoencoders. It was able to discover some latent semantics, and we'll concretize this intuition with the help of our current example. But for now, I just want you to recall that it helps in discovering the latent semantics. Okay. Now, notice that this product and I think you have done this in one of the assignments or something, can be written as a sum of the following products. right? So I can write it as sigma 1, u1, v1 transpose, sigma 2, u2, v2 transpose and so on. Okay. Can you tell me what this sum is? This is a rank 2 approximation of the original matrix. And I keep taking more terms, I get more and more rank approximations of the uh, original matrix. Okay. Now, and we all know that Okay, we all hopefully know that. What's the dimension of this? It's a scalar vector matrix. Scalar vector matrix. Okay, now of course you'll say matrix. But what is the dimension of the matrix? Why is it a matrix? It's an outer product of two vectors, right? This, what's the size of this? Yeah, m cross one into n cross one. So that, sorry, one cross n. So that gives you m cross n matrix. Everyone gets this. Otherwise, how is it a rank one approximation? You have to get the original dimensions, right? Everyone is clear with this. This is an outer product, and it belongs to R M cross N. Okay. And if we truncate the sum at the first term, we get the rank one approximation. And by SVD theorem, we know that this is the best rank one approximation. Now, what does this actually mean? That this is an approximation. What do we mean by that? So we'll see that on the next slide. And similar in the same vein, if we truncate it at the second term, we get the same best rank two approximation. Now, what do we mean by approximation here, actually? I mean, you say approximation always in this course at least try to think in terms of compression. How many elements are there in the original matrix? M cross N. That's how many elements you need to describe the matrix completely. If you do a rank one approximation, how many elements are you using? M plus N plus one, right? So the original matrix has M cross N entries, entries, and when you do a rank one approximation, you have M plus N plus one entries. So that that's the approximation, right? So you are trying to really compress the original data using only these many variables. You get that? Okay. And if you do a rank 2, twice this. Right? So as many rank, I mean as deeper as you go in the sum, you will have that many elements to do the approximation. Okay. But what is important is that the SVD theorem tells us that this is not just any random approximation, but this is the best approximation that you could have done. That means if you wanted to use only these many elements, these are the best elements to use. Right? Everyone gets that? Okay. Okay. Okay, so as an analogy, consider this, right? Suppose you are given eight bits to represent colors, okay? And this is how you represent very light green, light green, dark green, and very dark green. Okay, this this is what your representation is. In this original eight-bit representation, there is some similarity between the colors, but it's still a bit latent, okay? But now, if I were to ask you to use only four bits to represent these colors, what would you do? The lowest significant bits. If you use the first four, no, then you only get very light. That's not the essence of that color, right? You need the color to be there. So if you compress, what would happen is, so that's what happens in when you go from 256 bit colors to higher or lower, right? The distinctions between the colors go off. So all of them would be compressed to green. 
because that is the most important information in terms of the color, right. Because you need to be able to distinguish between green and red as opposed to very dark and very light green, right. That is the more important information that is there, right. So, when you compress it, the most important information in that entity should be retained and that is exactly what SVD does. When it does a compression, it retains the most important information in the corresponding entries. Is that clear? Is the intuition clear? Okay, fine. So, let us actually do this. So, this is my original co-occurrence matrix X and I just repeat when I say X, I mean X PPMI, okay. And now I have done SVD and I have done a low rank approximation of it. I do not know what was the value of K I selected, but some value of K. It was definitely greater than 1 or 2. So, now you see a low rank approximation of X. What is the first obvious thing that you notice? It is dense now, it is no longer sparse, okay. Now, can you tell me something about the colored entries? What was happening in the original matrix X? The word system and machine was never co-occurring because of which their value was 0. Same for human and user. But remember there is some important information in this matrix which also tells you what are the words with user appears with and what are the words with human appears with and that actually gives you intuition that these two words are actually related, right. Same for system and machine. System and machine both would appear in the context of words like interface, install, run and so on. So, you know they are similar, it just happens that these two words never appear together. So, this similarity between them was latent or hidden in the original co-occurrence matrix. Now, once I have done the SVD, what has happened? Because I have forced it to compress the data, it has retained the most important information and under that information, these two words have actually come closer to each other, right. So, you see that now you have a non-zero entry for the similarity between those two word pairs. Do you get the intuition? And can you imagine that this would happen with SVD? What is wrong in imagining? Right? Yeah. Always imagine. You can, but I guess, right. That is what is happening with this. Uh, so, you think about PCA, you think about SVD, you think about auto encoders, all the intuitions that we had built there, the same is being applied here, right. All of you get this? Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, after SVD you could have, right. That is not necessary that it should be positive. In the original matrix, you do not have negative entries. Uh, okay, now here is a question, right. Recall that earlier, each row of the original matrix X served as the representation of a word. Okay, this was my original X PPMI, not the uh, rank approximation. Now, in that case, what would XX transpose give me? What would the IGth entry of XX transpose be? So, let us look at this toy example. You have this X matrix, you have XI and XJ. Now, you take X transpose, okay. Now, this is x i, this is x j just standing. Now, what would be the i j th entry of x x transpose? It would just be the dot product between these two, right. Is that fine? So, this is just the dot product between them and we know that dot product is more or less the same as cosine similarity modulo the normalization, right. You just need to normalize it by the uh, norms of x and uh, x i and x j in this case, right. So, I will just assume that this is a uh, substitute for the cosine similarity, okay. So, every entry, every i j th cell in x x transpose is the cosine similarity between the representations of the i th word and the j th word. Is that clear to everyone? Okay, fine. And in the original case, which was the uh, x p p m i, the cosine similarity between human and user was 0.21. Now, once we do an S V D, what is a good choice for the representation of the word i? After SVD, what is the dimension of x hat? It is again m cross n because it is a sum of m cross n matrices, right. The dimension of x hat is m cross n. Although it is being constructed using fewer information, but the dimension is m cross n, right. That means what is the size of the representation of every word? Still high dimensional, still the same n or v, whatever. Everyone gets that? Is there any confusion with that? Okay. Uh, now, you could say, okay. I will just take the ith row of the reconstructed matrix and use that as the representation because I know that now this representation is better. Some of those 0 entries have changed, they have captured the latent semantics between the words. So, this is definitely better, no one is denying that, that this compression has given us better representation because we are only keeping the most important information. Now, if I do x hat x hat transpose, remember x hat is the reconstructed matrix, then again by the same argument, the ith cell actually gives me the cosine similarity between the ith word and the jth word. 
and you can see that now the cosine similarity between human and user has actually increased. Okay. So, this is just for me to convince you that we have learned more meaningful representations. So, now what do we choose as the representation? I have still while computing this cosine similarity, I have still used x i which is high dimensional which has the entire vocabulary as the number of columns as a representation. Right? So, there are two things coming out of here. One is I really like this cosine similarity. I see that it has improved that means the representations were computing something meaningful. But on the flip side I am still not happy because the representations are still high dimensional. Okay. So, can you construct a wish list for me based on this? I would want the same cosine similarity to be present as given by x hat x hat transpose, right? but I would like to represent it by fewer dimensions. Okay. That is exactly what my wish list is. Okay. So, let us see how do we do that. Now, for no reason I am going to construct a matrix w word equal to u sigma. What is u sigma? It is the part of the SVD, right? the SVD told us it was u sigma v transpose. So, I am just considering this matrix and I am go going to call it w word for no particular reason. Okay. Now, let me take x hat x hat transpose, I can write it as this, is that fine? Okay. Now, what is the next step? What does this mean? I want an answer, right? this is where that aha moment should be there or otherwise there is no point. What is, how many rows are there in w? The same as the number of words in our vocabulary. What is the dimension of each row? k. So, now w word has low dimensional representations for the words in the vocabulary, but while doing this what have we not sacrificed? The cosine similarity. The cosine similarity obtained by this is actually the same as this. Do you get that? How many of you see this is very very important right. If you have not understood this everything is meaningless. Okay. So, you see how from SVD we got a low rank or a low dimensional representation for the words right. W word is just to be clear k and k is very very less than v right. So, now we have representations for words which are much smaller they are no longer v dimensional. Remember in practice this k would be of the order 100, 200, 300 and remember your vocabulary was of the order 50 k, 1000 k and so on. Right? So, the huge reduction that you have got and you have still been able to learn meaningful representations which give you better similarity between related words. Right? So, conventionally w word which is u sigma and belongs to m cross k. So, I am sorry for messing this up, but I have used m, n and v are interchangeably. So, you would understand it from context that m is v and the other matrix which is v is known as the w context matrix. Right? What is the size of w context? n cross k or k cross n. Right? That means, it has the representations for all the context words and w word has the representation for all the target words. Right? So, we had these words on the rows and the context words on the column. So, w word has the representations for the rows and w context has the representation for the columns. Okay. So, this what we have seen so far and this is where we learned today is what uh, NLP was 6 years back right? before the advent of deep learning. If you wanted to use word representations this is what you would do. You do con construct a co-occurrence matrix, try these tricks of PMI, PPMI, positive, negative, 0 and all those things, those heuristics. Then do a simple SVD, retain the most important 100, 200 dimensions and treat that as word representations and use it for whatever you want to do. Now, what needs to be seen is what happened with deep learning and how have this way of computing word representations changed over the past few years. Right? So, that is what we are going to see in the next lecture. Okay?